In this video, I'm going to show you how you can access and use different APIs within your Discord bots. In this case, I'll be using a JSON placeholder API, which is a fake and free API for testing and prototyping. So this is the perfect resource we can use if you're new to using APIs. Now keep in mind that every API is slightly different on how you interact with it, but I will be going over some of the concepts that will apply to every API. This video assumes a solid understanding of JavaScript basics. If you don't know JavaScript, I suggest going down to the description of this video. I do have a complete JavaScript course, which you can watch the first hour of for free here on YouTube. So I assume that you already have a Discord JS project. If you don't, then check out the first video in the playlist that is linked in the pinned comment. That will show you how to set up your own Discord project. So to start off, let's go ahead and import all the necessary packages we need. This will be things such as Discord JS as well as your command handler. In this video, I'll be using the worn off keys commands command handler, but if you're comfortable with a different command handler, feel free to use that one instead. Keep in mind that you should import things with this syntax if you are using JavaScript with your bot, and if you're using TypeScript, you would import things with this syntax instead. Next, we need to create our own client, which will represent our bot within our project. We now have to specify what our bot intends to use. That way, Discord will actually send us the information we need. In this case, we need guild messages in order to create legacy commands and everything related to a guild also requires the guild intent as well. We can now listen for when our bot is ready. This is a perfect place to connect to databases or initialize your commands. In this case, I'm going to initialize the worn off keys commands command handler. The first argument is going to be our client object and then an object here, which will represent all the options we want for the worn off keys commands command handler. For example, here we can specify where our commands live. In this case, it is a commands directory in the same workspace as the rest of the project. And because I'm using TypeScript, I specified TypeScript as true here because I'm running this locally as TS node. Now, if you're using JavaScript or if you're compiling your TypeScript into JavaScript, then you do not need to include this line here. Finally, I'm specifying a string array here that's going to be the IDs for all the test servers or test guilds where I'm going to run this button. So this ID might change for you. And in order to get access to that, you can simply just right click on the server you want and click on copy ID, you can then go back and paste it in right here. And finally, we're going to log into the bot. In this case, I'm using the .env package. So my token is stored inside my .env file. So I can access it with this line here. And again, if you don't know how to use .env, then check out the first video in the playlist linked in the pinned comment down below. Now, there are many different ways to interact with APIs. In this video, I'll be showing you three of the simplest and also most commonly used ways to interact with different APIs. There are a decent amount of other ways to interact, but if you're just starting off, these are going to be the three most common ways. So go into your commands folder and create new files. I'm calling these .ts files, but if you're using JavaScript, create .js files instead. So create a delete.ts or delete.js, a git, and a post file as well. We're going to start off in the git file. The first thing we need to do is import all the necessary packages. The only package we need in this case is going to be Axios. So you can import it with JavaScript with a standard require statement like this or with TypeScript using an import statement. And also if you're using TypeScript with worn off keys commands, you'll want to import the I command interface from the worn off keys commands package. Now, if you don't have Axios installed, you can simply go to your terminal, click on new terminal, and then run npm install Axios. This should install it to your node modules folder. Next, we're looking to export an empty object. Within JavaScript, that will be module.exports equals an empty object like this. And within TypeScript, that will be export default empty object. Now, if you're using worn off keys commands, you can specify what type of object this is by saying as I command, which is what we just imported right here on line six. Now, no matter if you're using JavaScript or TypeScript, the following will be the same. We first have to set a category and a description for this command. You can enter whatever you want, but in this case, I just have some basic text here. We also need to specify who can actually use this command. For simplicity, I'm just gonna make it so only admins can use this. And now we get to specify what arguments are associated with this command. So within one of keys commands, we can set a minimum and maximum number of arguments. In this case, the maximum number is one and the minimum will be zero. So the expected arguments here will be an ID, which is optional. And because one of keys commands has the ability to create both legacy and slash commands for us, I have to specify what type of values our expected arguments will be for slash commands. In this case, we just want a number. So I'm going to pass in number right here. Next, we can specify the string both for slash. This will create both a legacy and a slash command and we have test only right here as true. This will make it so our command can only be used within the test servers we specified right here when initializing one of keys commands. 
This is very important for slash commands when developing and testing things, because without it, it'll create a global slash command, which will take up to an hour to be shown within servers using your bot. But specifying test only as true will make it so it will immediately show up to all the test servers which we provided on our main file. Now finally, we can create our callback method, which we ran every single time a user actually runs this get command. This should be an asynchronous method, and within it, we are destructuring the arguments property that one of Key's commands gives us. So now I'm going to specify the endpoint we want to connect to. Every API is going to have different endpoints, which are essentially just different functions we can call by passing in a certain URL. Essentially, our code will send a request to their code, and then behind the scenes, their code will take some type of action and return a response back to our code. In this case, I'm looking to gain access to different posts. So if we go to the website and we go to the guide at the top, we can see right here, getting a resource, which is what we're going to be doing. Here we have an endpoint right here that is forward slash posts, forward slash one, and the output we some type of JSON data return back to us. We also have access to listing all resources when we're not specifying the forward slash one at the end, and this will return up to 100 different items inside this JSON array. So a link to this guide where you can gain access to these endpoints we found in the description down below. If we go back over to VS Code, we now have access to ours, and if you remember, the maximum number of arguments is one, which means that zero is an option. So in this case, we want to see if the user passed in any arguments, and if so, we want to append that onto the end of the URI. Keep in mind that this forward slash here is important because otherwise, let's we'll say to pass in five, it would just say posts five, and that's not how this works. The posts word here is which endpoint to actually try and reach, and so post five will be trying to reach a completely different endpoint. But if we access forward slash posts forward slash five, this would actually work because it'll understand we're trying to reach out to the post endpoint, and then it'll take this and then understand that it's trying to reach to the fifth post. So I can get rid of these, where the end of this string just has posts and no forward slash, that's important. And then here, if the user specified which post to get, we would then add on the forward slash and then the argument that they want. Finally, we'll actually send the request to the typey code API. In this case, we're saying axios.get, which is one of the methods that we use in order to interact with the API. All these file names up here are actually methods that we can use to interact with this API. So git is going to get something from the API and not modify any data on the backend. And each endpoint, such as this one right here, can have multiple different methods attached to it. So us passing the URI to this git method here will send a special git request to this endpoint. It will understand that it's a git request and then it'll do some type of functionality depending on the API. In this case, it's just simply returning some posts and then we're going to console log that right here. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to open up a new terminal. I can run my bot with npm run dev. If you use a different script to run your bot, feel free to use that. Now that my bot's online, I can go over to Discord and I can do exclamation point git. And if I go back into VS Code here, we now see 100 different items have been logged into this array. Now this text is called lorem ipsum text. It's essentially just dummy data that's often used when designing websites and other things like that. And this is obviously just all dummy data in the first place. This API doesn't actually return anything meaningful. It's just here for testing and learning. So this is 100 different items, but now let's see what happens if we specify an argument and then we try and access a different endpoint. So going back, I can say exclamation point git and then 100. If I go back into VS Code, if we look previously, we had this array. We see the end of it right here. And here we see the ID of 100, the user ID of 10, and then all of this text right here. And we see that this thing right here that was returned is just an object with the same exact data. So I can go back to Discord and I can access the first element and this gives me different information. So this is what a get request does. It sends a get request to the specific endpoint. That endpoint understands what type of request it is. In this case, it's a get request and then it returns information because that's what get requests do. So now let's go ahead and copy and paste all of this code here into our other two files. You can do this with Control A, Control C or Command A, Command C on a Mac and then go ahead and paste it into your post.js or post.ts file and your delete.ts or delete.js file. So for the example of post, this is going to be sending information to the API. This is often useful when creating or updating information. So here I have a basic command that is very similar to the get request, but the actual callback logic is missing. So what we're looking to add is a post request and how we're destructuring the data response is the same exact thing. But axios.post will now send a specific post request to the same endpoint. Here we have typeeco.com forward slash posts. And this is the same exact endpoint that we just used right here. So like I mentioned, each endpoint can have different methods. In this case, we're accessing the git and over here, we're accessing the post method. But what are these things we're passing in right here? 
Well, something that post request can do is pass in something known as a body, which is a JSON object that has extra information. You can pass in some information through the actual endpoint here, and that would be adding on a question mark and then extra things such as name equals Alex at the end. And if you want more, you can say and age equals 28. So they start with a question mark and they're separated by an and symbol. And oftentimes when checking the documentation for different APIs you want to use, you'll see different information on query string parameters such as these, or if you want to use the body such as these. Every API is different and how it interacts is slightly different as well. So in this case, if we go back to the documentation and we're looking for the post request, here we see creating a resource and we're using the method post. Now this is using the fetch API, which is slightly different than Axios, but the concept is still the same. When using fetch, we have a body, which is going to be a string. So we're using json.stringify and passing in an object. Now Axios does this for us behind the scenes, so we don't have to specify json.stringify. Instead, we can just pass in our own object. But essentially the body is used whenever there's a lot of information being sent to the endpoint, and if there's just a few pieces of information, you can oftentimes just put it at the end of the URL, but that is up to the API developer to specify which method to use. In this case, they want the body, so we have to use the body. Now next we have headers here, which is very useful for specifying different types of content, as well as passing in authentication tokens. So if APIs that you want to use require you to have a certain authentication token, you'd pass it in with the headers. And just like everything else I've mentioned, every API is different. So you want to look at the documentation for the API to see how they want the headers to be passed in. So let's go back to our code. And here we're going to send a post request with this body and with these headers. Now, as I mentioned, typically post requests will create or update information on the end server. But with this dummy API, it doesn't actually do that. It just simulates that something was changed. So don't expect the actual posts from the get requests to be changed. But in a real API, or if you create your own API, if you do use a post request on a certain endpoint, for example, with ID one, then you can expect the get request to return the updated information. But again, this is a dummy API used for testing and learning. So we shouldn't expect anything to actually change on the data that we retrieve using the get command. But let's go ahead and try the post command and see what happens. Here, I'm just destructuring the data as a response, and then I'm going to console log the data. So I'm going to open up another terminal and I'm going to turn my bot. Going back into Discord, I can run exclamation point post. And if I go back into VS Code, we now see the response here is basically just going to be what we inserted. The only difference is that now we have an ID, which was not there before. So this is oftentimes what will happen whenever you're creating something is that the same thing will basically just be returned but with an ID attached to it, which is convenient because oftentimes on our end, having the ID of the created object is useful. But if you try and fetch ID 101, we're not going to actually get anything that's super meaningful. So if I say get 101 and I go back over here, we actually get an error. And if I scroll all the way up, here we see response with a status of 404 and a status text of not found. So this is an example of how this data here is not actually created, even though beforehand, if we scroll all the way up to our last response, we saw that it was created with an ID of 101. But again, this is a dummy API, so nothing's gonna be actually stored on their servers. So now I'm gonna show you how you can use a delete request, which is very similar in concept when it comes to all of these. Aside from getting something or creating something, it's going to delete something. And obviously because this is a dummy API, it won't actually delete stuff on their server, but on a real API, it will. So if you haven't already, go ahead and copy your code from either of these files into your delete file. So this code looks very similar. The command is set up in the exact same way. The only difference is that the minimum number of arguments is one because we have to specify which element we want to actually delete. So here in our URI, we're always going to be adding on args index zero. And this is the same exact endpoint as the other ones because we're still working with posts. The only difference is we're now calling the delete method. So this will send a delete request to this endpoint and the API will then understand we're trying to delete something. So I'm going to go ahead and run my bot. So after running my bot, I can go into Discord and I can do exclamation point delete. And this time it's going to yell at me saying to specify an ID. So I can say delete one. And if I go back into VS Code, we now see an empty object is returned. This is common when using delete, but of course every API is different. So the one you want to use might have some response data that might be useful to you. But oftentimes an empty object means that everything worked. And if something doesn't work, then an error will be thrown instead. So although we are using a dummy API here, I hope these concepts made sense to you. These overall concepts of get, post, and delete are going to be useful on almost every API there is. And if you want a more detailed explanation of APIs, perhaps one with authentication, then go ahead and leave a comment down below on which API I should cover. 
And if you see your idea there as well, go ahead and like that person's comments so I understand which API I should cover in a more specific video. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to download the source code, gain early access to new videos, as well as get your own Linux VPS, then consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking on the join button directly below this video.